Hello, and welcome to Code Pro, your source for helpful and effective programming tutorials. Today we are going to be continuing to part two of the Swift tutorial series, covering the basics of control flow, such as if statements and loops. So, open up Xcode and create a new Swift iOS playground, and let's dive right in and start coding. Let's take a look at basic if statements in Swift. So, let's assume we have two variables a predicted temperature and an actual temperature. So let predicted temp equals 85 and let actual temp equals 90 degrees. So let's assume for a second that we have a conditional that if the predicted temperature equals the actual temperature that something will happen. Otherwise or else something else will happen. So in this case, if the temperatures match, I can print the weather man got it correct. Or I can print out the weather man is dead wrong. You can see in the console down here, the weather man is dead wrong was printed out because the conditional was not met. The actual temperature and the predicted temperature do not match, but what if I changed the predicted temperature to match the actual temperature? If I just change those variables to match each other, you can see that the code path of execution goes this way and prints out the weatherman got it correct. So what would we do if we had another case we wanted to check for? Maybe we wanted to check for a predicted low temperature. Obviously this if statement right here will not satisfy that condition. And all we have otherwise is an else block that just prints out that something was not at all what we expected. We can add in an else if block inside of our if else to catch any other conditions that we might want to check for. And that would look something like this. Else if, let me go ahead and move that down, set this up here. Else if the actual temp equals the predicted low temperature, print the weather man predicted the low temp. And we'll just scoot this back up one here. And we'll change our actual temp to match our predicted low temp, which is 75 and 75. And you can see that this else if block is executed. The weather man predicted the low temp. So we can check for one condition, multiple conditions, as many as we want. And if none of those conditions are met, then our else block will execute. Now let's take a look at switch statements in Swift. You can think of switch statements as very concise if statements that can check against multiple conditionals in a very clean and elegant way. A switch statement in Swift looks like this. We can switch what we want to check for, in this case the actual temp, and we can check that against a variety of possible cases that we want to consider. We can create a case such that the actual temperature equals the predicted temp. So we would write it like this, case predicted temp. And if that case was satisfied, we could print the weather man got the predicted temperature. We could even do something like this, case 55 degrees, and print it's really cold out right now. Or we can have what's called a default case, where kind of like an else block, if no other condition was satisfied, the default case will fire every time. So we can print the weather man was dead wrong again. And we can go on and on and on with different cases. And you can see that this is a really clean way to write our if else logic instead of having to do if else if else syntax. Now the one benefit with Swift is that when a case is met, it does not fall down to the next case or the case after that. It stops once the first case is met. In languages like C, Objective-C, and C++, we'd have to always remember to write a break statement right after our case. We do not need to do this in Swift because as soon as one case is met and evaluated, it exits the scope of the switch statement. So let's go ahead and play around with this. Let's say the actual temp is 55 and take a look. So I'll change 
actual temp at 55, and you can see right here, it's really cold out right now, was met and satisfied and printed that. If I change actual temp to really, really hot, let's say 100 degrees, you can see that we don't have a case that evaluates for 100 degrees, so our default case, the weatherman was dead wrong again, prints down below in the console. Let's take a look at loops in Swift, starting with the for loop. The for loop will look like this, for index in zero dot dot dot, in this case five, print the value of index, and if you look down in the console below you can see it prints zero through five. And what's happening is the value of the index starts at zero, prints out zero, gets incremented by one, checks against to make sure we have less than five, or less than or equal to five, prints out one, increments to two, and so on and so forth until we get to five and then we exit scope. An important distinction to make in Swift are these three dots right here, which is known as the closed range operator, which means that we are going to print zero to five, including five. Now there's another operator known as the half open range operator, which looks like this. And if you notice down below, we are printing zero through four, not including five. And this is a really important thing to be aware of because it's very easy to step out of bounds in your arrays if you step one too many over using the closed range operator and throw a runtime exception. Now let's take a look at while loops in Swift. So I've defined two variables here, an attempt count and a maximum attempts. And a while loop will look like this for our use case. While the attempt count is less than the maximum attempts, we will go ahead and increment the attempt count by one each time through until it is no longer less than maximum attempts, at which point we will enter or exit the loop. So if we were to print this out, print the attempt count, you'll see that we print out zero through 99. And once we've printed out 99, we then increment the attempt count one more so that it's 100. And then we evaluate our condition again. So we say, is 100 less than 100? No, it is not. So we no longer go through that loop one more time and exit scope and continue on with the rest of our program. Now let's take a look at the repeat while loop in Swift. The repeat while loop is very similar to the do while loop from other programming languages, and it looks like this. Repeat a section of code while a condition is still met. So in this case, we're going to repeat printing out our new variable guess tries, and then we'll increment the try by one while the guess tries are less than the max guess attempts. And so if we look at the console down below, you can see that zero through nine is printed. And just like a for or a while loop would have been executed, we are printing out our value, incrementing our value by one, and then checking again. The main distinction between the repeat while loop and a regular while loop is that the conditional check is done after one execution of your loop has occurred. In other words, your loop is guaranteed to execute at least once before a conditional check is made to determine if another iteration through the loop should happen again. And that wraps up Swift tutorial number two. You will find the completed code available for free on GitHub. The link is down below in the description. And you should follow CodePro on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+, and keep up to date with the latest channel updates. Those links are also down below in the description. And as always, if you liked the video, go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe for more future tutorials to come. Thank you so much for stopping by.